Hello, everybody. Right here at ringside, I got Gary, I got James, and I got Kevin right here. We got James Dunkinson Roofing in the house. We also have Kevin Holland, a fan favorite right here. Gary, what do you think about the action so far? I love it. I never get tired of this first-class show every time. One of my absolute favorite things to do. James, how are you liking the fights tonight? Man, these fights are amazing tonight. Oh, my gosh, man. They are going hard. Now, tell us what you have going at James Dunkinson Roofing and JDR Commercial. Man, basically, we've got, if you've got a leak in a roof, we've got a cure for it, man. You guys call us. We'll be glad to come out and check it out. Uh, we're doing some amazing transformations on people's homes. If you, uh, you want to go to jduncansonroofing.com, you can check out all of our work, man. We're all over Facebook. Check it out. Now, you mentioned that you're all over Facebook, but, you know, sometimes you're all over his banners right here. This is one of the fighters that you sponsor. This is Kevin Holland right here. Always a show, always a treat at XKO. Everybody give it up for Kevin Holland right here. There you go. Now, before we get to you, Kevin, I want to thank you for being a sponsor right here at XKO. Thank you guys so much. Now, Kevin, because he has a lot to say, and I'm not going to take the microphone away from him. Now, Kevin, what have you been up to? Uh, you know... Just, just, just whooping ass, man. That's all I can do. You know, just whooping ass and claiming JDR until the day I die. There you go. Now, you, and you're also dressing very spiffy. I love this shirt, by the way. You know, I always love this shirt. Now, Kevin, when can we see you in a cage next? Uh, no later than January. Hopefully November. You know, my birthday is November 5th, and you know I love scrapping on my birthday. So hopefully we can go out there and knock some heads off and collect some checks, right? Hey, that's what you're good at, so keep on doing what you're doing. I got James, I got Gary right here of Jay Dunkinson Roofing. And you got one more thing to say? Yeah, I just want to give a shout out to my crew over here, Jay Dunkinson Roofing. Man, I love having my people out here every, every time you guys are out here, man. It's awesome. Guys, thank you for coming over here tonight. Once again, I want to say thank you to James and Gary of Jay Dunkinson Roofing and XKO fan favorite. And a UFC fighter, Kevin, the Trailblazer Holland. Guys, give it up for him. He's a proud of 3,000 champ Soto Soto. It's very impressive watching Valerie Soto here. Great job with Valerie, definitely on the offensive. Very quick, crisp hands. Wow, Desiree, even a few shots there by Valerie. And there, Soto picking up the pace again. And I tell you, an amateur title in hand. Uh, wow. This fight is brought to you by J. Duncanson Group, a family-owned company since 2007, specializing in all your roofing needs. Valerie Soto coming in to uh, the Beatles. That's cool. The Valerie, great amateur career. Uh, recently had her first professional MMA fight. Won that, so she's 1-0 as a pro. After, like I said, she had a really phenomenal uh, amateur career. She's a tremendous fighter. And here she's stepping back into the XKO cage to take on the newcomer, Andrea Morrow. So, let's see some fireworks. So what we're all here to see, folks. We want to see some fireworks. Love watching the ladies in the pro division. Just fantastic. Man, what a great night at XKO fights. 3,000 people here. Just phenomenal. Of course. 
the world famous Gas Monkey Live, Dallas, Texas. Valerie Soto high five of people as she comes by. Her team, definitely a fan favorite for the folks here. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is brought to you by Jay Dunkinson Roofing. This fight is scheduled for three rounds in the XKO strawweight division. This is our co-main event of the evening. Introducing first, fighting out of the next bank blue corner. She's a freestyle fighter, standing five feet, two inches tall, weighing in 115 pounds, making her professional debut, representing Bushido MMA, Fighting out of El Paso, Texas, Relentless Andrea Amaro. And across the cage, her opponent, fighting out of the Jim Ross red corner. She's a freestyle fighter, standing five feet, five inches tall, weighing in 115 pounds. With one victory and zero defeats, she represents Fitness Fight Factory. Fighting out of Dallas, Texas. She is the former XKO amateur strawweight champion of the world, Valerie Malika Soto. You referee, Aaron Menard. Center. All right, ladies, we're the rules in the back. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Touch gloves. Let's do this. Valerie Soto, she will be uh, black trunks with the white riding. Her opponent, Andrea Amaro, will be in the all black. Soto is, obviously, we've, we've seen a lot of her. What a fighter. Touch of the gloves, and here we go. Oof, both ladies exchanging punches, really going at it. Here we are, co-main event of the evening. Relentless, Andrea Amaro taking on Malgija. Valerie Soto, the XKO former strawweight champion of the world in the amateur series, now professional with one victory, zero defeats, and Andrea Amaro making her professional debut all the way from El Paso. Yeah, she, she's showing right, right off the bat. She's showing that, you know, I didn't come all the way from El Paso, you know, to get to get beat here. I mean, that's a that's a 12 hour drive. 12 hour drive. She's about to graduate with her bachelor's in forensic psychology in the spring of 2019. She works with a peer support group and she helps those who have mental health issues and function in life like a mentor. That's uh, just just tremendous that she does that from a work standpoint. She's in school and you know, she's fighting and she's a solid yeah, she's a solid fighter. She really is, you know, and it's great to see Valerie Soto back in here, watching her through her amateur career and now into her pro, stalking her opponent, Andrea Armado. And my hat off to Andrea. Her amateur career was actually 5-1. and one. Yeah. So she is definitely a game opponent for Valerie Malija Soto. Yeah, and, and, you know, you go your amateur career, you, you lost once. And that's always good. I think an amateur, personally, I think an amateur needs to know what it's like to lose. Right. And you see how they react to that before they go to the pro level. Well, right now, at five complete fights, Valerie Soto, 4-0, amateur strawweight champion of yes. the world, now 1-0. I'll tell you, Fitness Fight Factory is doing it right. Yeah, and you, you know, the one thing about Soto that I I will not forget in her amateur career. Oh, I, they are going for the broke here. I tell you, both of them, neither one afraid to slug it out. And that's the thing is, if you've watched Valerie Soto's opponents, they always want to try to hem her up. They always want to keep her close. Because when they know they get a little bit of mid-range or long-range distance, Valerie Soto will knock your ass out. Yes, yeah, she will. She and she and she's for this weight division. She's she's a great height, five foot five. Uh, she's got long arms, long legs. She knows how to use them exceptionally well. What a tough fight because both these women are mirror reflections of each other. We saw it earlier tonight. Yeah, very. Yeah, great exchange. Yeah, very much. And they both have almost the same amount of experience. The only difference is Soto, you know, has had a pro fight, has won it. 
Uh, the other thing that, you know, watching her in amateur career is Valerie, her, her ability to go and go at a high pace round after round after round is, is unlike anything I've seen in the women's division. You know, the thing with Valerie, her fight, her first professional fight against uh, Crazy Christina Chris, I'd probably say about 70% of the fight was actually on the ground. So this is the type of fight that is perfect for both of these fighters, Andrea, and for Valerie, standing it up, you know, a little bit of dirty boxing. Yeah, and, and, and obviously, you know, the fans love to see this. You know, oh, they, yeah. you know they, they, they like seeing this type of thing. These are really great knees by Andrea. She's got the head trapped. But the thing is, you know, you're already on your tippy toes, and you're already bringing the knee up, so you're already you're not in a flat-footed position. So you're already ready for that extension. Well, and I like the way Andre uses the underhook to control her. She's got the underhook on, on Valerie's uh, left arm, and then her right arm is over the top of the head to control her. Now, the only downside to that, in a position like this for Valerie, uh, what a lot of fighters like to do is they like to pick you up. If your hand, if your arm is over the top of their head against the cage, you oftentimes are going to find your ass getting slammed to the ground. Yep. Now with Valerie Soda and Andrea coming into this fight, uh, it's new. It's new territory for Andrea, and I say only new because, uh, with the exception of sparring and so forth, you know, reinforced knees, that's uh, right, elbows, and elbows, you know, and so this is a this is a, a waking experience. Yeah. Yes. Now she's able to unleash everything. Uh, that she was she man I tell you she's very you know good job for for Valerie she, to she's, disengage yeah it, but I mean, I mean Andrea's really impressed me I mean she's very control very good at controlling head posture it really is I'd like to see Valerie disengage if she could that's the thing it's if 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 she could if she could but I mean Andrea's doing a great job keeping her close yeah keep her and, in the clinch. And, and look how she uses her head and her cage work I mean somebody has worked somebody look at that head how she uses her head to control Valerie Somebody, and I don't know her coaches, but has done a tremendous job teaching her cage work. Right. Uh, very impressed. Really, really impressed. You know, I tell you, it, from watching the first round here, neither neither one afraid to swing for the fences on this. Oh my God! No. And they're and they're in the fire. They see those those yeah. punches coming. They're not blocking. They're just saying, no, okay. they're not flinching. You know, it's this is the slightest head movement. Mm -hmm. And like you say, they're both they're both throwing for the fences. And that's exciting to watch. That's that's the kind of fire that you want to see. Now the the, the thing about it is, somebody's gonna get knocked out. That's, yeah. that's just what's going to happen. Yeah, and both these ladies have the power. There's no doubt both of them have the power to do that. Right. Rafael Casillas in the corner of Valerie Soto right there. Andrea Amaro ready to get off the stool. Boy, Andrea. Valerie Soto you know, ready to we, go. We've never seen Andrea fight before. That we, was the first time we, seeing her. We, we know that she came. She's very heralded as a very technical and, and competent if not dangerous fighter in her amateur career. She's showing that no loss of that as she moves in the pro level. My only thing is I wish there could have been a belt attached to this fight right now. Well, it's too early for both it's, of them. It is. It is. Boy, both, both, I mean, like you say, both ladies not afraid to just flick and wing it, man. Oh, Andrea had a little cut, had a little uh, punch there directly right down the pipe. Oh, oh, big, oh. big cut, uh, big Big round kick by Soto. Nice round kick, followed up by three or four punches directly down the pipe. Valerie going back to that. Wow, and right there, Andrea. Andrea oh, smart. Trying, trying to take the back of Valerie Soto. Wow. Ch chased her. She's, I mean, she came in. She came in quick. And you're hearing the coaches saying, get your backside up. Johnny Bedford up. saying, get your backside up. Johnny Bedford just competed in a bare-knuckle competition. I believe it was in Wyoming. He won. That's the coach you want to hear right now in your corner. Yeah, Johnny Bedford has been around the MMA world for quite a while. He's a very, very, very good fighter. Him and Evan Cutts both yep. running Fitness Fight Factory. Andrea Amaro going. Now, the thing is, right there, she went to the body. Andrea went to the body, completely legal. Yeah, and, and, and you know, was... Was warned that you know not to not to not to go to the head, so she did a good job. Right now, Valerie fighting off Andrea Morrow right now, who's trying to go in for a rear naked choke here. She's gonna try to get that chin and just start cranking. Yeah, and I tell you, Andrea Morrow is just really impressed the hell out of me. Tenacious, isn't she? She is. She very much is. 
and you see Valerie sort of bridging up a little bit, trying to take some of that pressure off. Wow. Valerie eating some punches right now, trying to pepper her up. Andrea's smart. She is very smart. She's not trying to just go in there blindly. Oh, well, down reverses to the full great. mount. Yeah, but right now Valerie's in trouble. Yeah, and she, Valerie knows to get out of it. Look at this. Rolling going arm bar, for arm bar by Amaro. Holy smokes. Going north Valerie, south. Valerie going to clamp her arms, come up over the top. Get Valerie it. was in this Change position this position. Christina Christ. Yeah. You, oh, yeah, that was a great fight, and, and she was. And she got out of it, and you and I both were like, how did she get out of it? It was awesome. And she's going to have to do a Houdini act here to do the same thing. This is, uh, my goodness. Valerie's smart, very smart now. Now the thing is, you don't want to roll, you don't want to have Valerie get rolled to her back because then she's going to take that advantage away. Oh, got to watch out for the knee to the head. Well, and she didn't get the head. I mean, you know, so it was totally legal. She was actually using the knee to, to break the grip that Andrea had. It's a very clever, clever move. And right now, Andrea's doing everything she can to try to hold, hold that arm in. Both fighting to the nail. Yeah, this is, I mean, man, I tell you, this is, this is awesome. And I'll tell you right now, you know, for Valerie to be in this position for her first professional fight and now her second, this is familiar ground for her right now. Well, yeah, you don't want to be there, but you know what? She hasn't taken any chump fights, that's for sure. No, no, no. All her fights, I'm telling you right now, are pristine fights. All right, she's going to go back and forth going north now, right and south. There, I like this. Now, right there, do you see how she's using her, 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 her legs here? To do a little bit of a, a little bit of a separation, the crank in the face of Andrea, and that that was a that was a smart move. When you try to go north and south like that, okay. So she broke it free. Andrea's arm is, but Andrea, th this is smart. You see how she used the the leg there of Soto, and there we go. All right, so Soto's Z Z now, Soto needs to her need persistence paid off, but now she's getting peppered. She's got to turn. Good job by Soto. Hammer fist coming down. Man, Andrea is no joke, dude. I mean, she is no joke whatsoever. Right now, got a full, pretty much, I mean, I say a side mount, but I mean, it's damn near close to almost a full mount here. If Andrea can shift her left leg over to the full mount of, of Soto, Soto's not doing really much to prevent that from coming over, but but Andrea's just happy where she's at right now. And oh. there she goes. She put the stump. Put her knee on the stomach, crossed over. Now Valerie Soto's eating some serious punches yeah, right now. Yeah, and she's going to have to step it up right here. If Valerie can disengage, oh, just nice. disengage. There you go. That's nice. And that's what she did against Christina Chris in the title fight. Right now, Valerie has to remember, you can use those elbows when you're in close like that. Look at the strength of Andrea Amato. Yeah, and both, both ladies super, super evenly matched. Valerie Soto, would you well to use the elbows to the ears? Or oh, yeah, we've seen that. Just pepper that up. I mean, wow, what a great second round. Man, I tell you what. What a great second round. Really, really great second round. You know, that's what, that was going to be a hard one to score. Maybe because halfway through the fight, it was really Valerie Soto the whole way. I think Soto got the first round. I think that one right there was a 100% to, to Amaro. Okay. Well, you know, definitely I agree with you because Amaro controlled everything on the ground so well. And had full advantage while she yeah, was. Yeah, I mean, I mean, she was, listen, she was going for submission. She was doing ground and pound. She was controlling positions. Fantastic work. That was a great, great second round. And here we are, XKO 43, the co main event of the evening. Soto taking on Andrea Amato. What do you think? We have one more round to go. One more round. We're going to see what's going to happen. What do you think? I think it's one and one. One and one. One and one. I, th I think. I think right now we go to the third round. I think whoever takes third this round, round takes the fight. Here we go. Man, I tell you what, awesome athletes, huh? Oh, just I'm, awesome athletes. You know, just then they're just going, man. They're staying loose. I like that they're staying loose right now in the corner. I expect Andrea to go ahead and go go for a takedown at some point here early in this round. I. I'm hoping Valerie can keep her at a distance. And, oh, God, that's, bring that, bring that, bring that roundhouse up again. That's nice. Because there she goes. The, the, the only problem with that roundhouse is it leaves you a little bit vulnerable. Exposed. Yep. Yeah. To, to, to have somebody come in and take you down. There you go. Great job disengaging for Valerie. But both these ladies are just 
putting it together. I'll tell you, man, just very impressed by both their technique. Uh-huh, for sure. I'll tell you, when you go shin to shin, brother, I mean, ah, you know. You can, <laughs> there, there's, there's, not, there's nothing fun about that. Shin to shin, no. Even, no matter how much adrenaline you have going on, it's it's going to wake you up. That's exactly right. Oh, uh, I'm noticing that Andrea, when she shoot, when she goes in, it's like she's trying to, oh, wow. That's a nice cross by, by Valerie right there. I think Valerie just found her range right now. She's finding, she's found yeah. Andrea's rhythm. Well, yeah, and, and, and if, on, yeah, if you can keep Andrea out there, you know, you can pepper with that with what you're finding on your range but but she's like you say she's had luck getting valerie against the fence and that's caused valerie some trouble and there we go Valerie's doing a great job being a counter puncher i like that andrea's trying to throw the first punch though too well and i think andrea would do well to throw throw something up the middle Ooh, she got caught with that right go ahead he did Let's throw something up the middle oh wow valerie just got rocked right there a little bit they're trading punches to the head that's for sure and, and nobody's buckling. Nobody nobody is buckling in the knees at all. No. Not no. to say these punches aren't doing any damage, but they're just no. that tough. No, they're, they're, yeah, these ladies are that <laughs> tough. Now, if you're Andrea, start working that outside leg. Because, you know, if you take that away from, from Valerie, you know, she's not going to be able to come off and, and step in as much. Well, the ankle cutting. Oh. oh, what a beautiful spinning elbow. And she just nicked Valerie with that. I mean, she didn't hit her square, but she did hit her. My God, I I don't want to be I don't want to be a judge, Antonio. No, not at all. <laughs> this fight's awesome. I wish this was going five rounds, dude. It's like you're seeing double vision. Uh, right? I mean, these ladies are so evenly matched. No, I'll tell you right now, their toughness just went to the roof for me. Yeah, I, I, just went to the I, roof. I, I mean, oh, I mean, I mean, awesomeness. Right now, I think Andrea is starting to feel a little worse for the wear right now. Uh, I think if Valerie lands a couple more rights. Well, she's definitely she's found a home for that right cross for sure. And, you know, but if it, I, it's a situation now, Antonio. I think if she goes with the right cross and lead, lead uppercut. But see, every time that Valerie throws that, throws that right kick, she's not getting back quick enough, and Andrea's beating her before she can get That's a base right. back. That's right. That's right. That's right. And, under, you know, Andrea is so good, man. Now, I want to see. Now, oh, Andrea, nice, Andrea's nice. not even really leaving those punches out there. If no, you, she's not. You, if you look at a boxer, it snaps right back. Andrea's not leaving it out there. Neither, neither is Valerie. That's no. why they were able to exchange so quickly. But, right. And you can, and that, that goes, they're so well trained. They're both trained incredibly well. You don't you, you don't see bad habits out of these ladies. You see, no, not at all. You see really technically fine skills. Oh and, wow! Oh ooh, man. back and forth. Man, both of them just what a chin. I mean, both of them just one. I mean, changing punches. And I think I think as a fighter, when you're doing this and you guys are exchanging lefts and rights and lefts and rights, at some point you got to throw an uppercut in there and change that up a little bit. Gotcha. Oh man, that was a big shot right there by Soto. I sense a spinning back elbow or a spinning back fist coming in here pretty soon. Well, they're not going to have long. We're under a minute left in this final third round. They're staying right in the middle of the cage. Nobody. I, I, I know. I love it. Off. No, I mean it's 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 two gladiators tearing each other up. And what a co-main event right now. Oh, we still have for one sure. more fight. For sure. Jose Soto and Cameron Miller. Yeah, and I hope that the main event, I mean, because you don't want to be shown up by the co-main event, right? No. And, and, this, well, is, and, and this co-main event is awesome. Oh, it is, man. I mean, we've said maybe two or three times tonight, fight of the night, fight of the night. I mean, here we are again saying fight of the night. Yeah, and I, for me, this is, for me right now, this is fight of the night. Because you're seeing such technical ability from both ladies. You're seeing... Just two great fighters. All right, here we go. Expect them to go for broke here with 10 seconds. Throwing everything out there in the kitchen sink. Great, great job by take Valerie. Down. Great take. A great reversal by Amanda. I mean, my gosh. How good are Andrea? Here not Amanda. Go. Andrea. Here we go. Let's go to the judges and see what we've got. Well, let's, folks, stick with us. We're going to see here in just a second who won this fight. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of fighting action, we go to the judges' scorecard. Judge Marconi Nascimento scores the bout 30-27 for Andrea Amaro. 
Javier Martinez scores the bout 30-27 for Valerie Soto. And Burgie Stillwagner scores the bout 29-28, declaring your winner by split decision, Ruthless Andrea Amaro. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, Antonio and I were talking about it, easily fight of the night thus far. I mean, I hands down fight of the night. Uh, Andrea, you, you fought, Valerie is, is a tremendous fighter, an awesome fighter. We knew about you coming in, uh, you know, I said before the fight, great amateur career coming in, pro debut. One of the things that I had to say is that she's coming all the way from El Paso. She didn't come here to lose by any means. You put on an absolute sick performance, and uh, you know, I, I just mind-boggling your skill set. Tell us, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where, you know, you're from El Paso. You're here fighting next scale. Tell us a little bit about yourself, your training, and things like that. What do you do? Um, well, I train full time. I go to school full time, almost done with school, um, and I also work with people who uh, suffer from mental mental health issues, such as myself. So anybody who thinks that if you have a mental illness and you can't do something, they're wrong. That's awesome. That's awesome. I want to know, what do you prefer to do more, stand up or the ground? Because you did both with expertise tonight. You did not look like, a, a, this did not look like pro debut. Um, I love to stand just because it just like shows respect between fighters. And plus, everybody likes to see that. <laughs> There's no doubt of that. And let me ask you, too. Who, who taught you your cage work? Because because I was commenting. I was commenting. Your coach did a hell of a job. Your head control on the cage, controlling your opponent with your head, some of the nuances that, that people really don't see. You did, you did those as well as I've seen anybody. Your head control and underhook control simultaneous were absolutely phenomenal. I just want to ask you this. Can we have you back next time? Hell yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, she came all the way from El Paso. Full-time student. She came, she saw, she conquered. Couldn't ask for a better fight for a pro debut. So let's give her some more Texas love because that is one of our Texas fighters with a real bright future. Andrea, congratulations one more time. Thank you, Dallas, for having me.